My name's Regan. I work for Anthony J. Lyon Detective Bureau. They call me the Lion's Eye. Jeff Regan, investigator, starring Frank Graham as Regan with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon. So stand by for mystery and suspense and adventure in tonight's story of The Barefoot Boy with Shoes, Gone. There were three women in it, three guys, and seven cats. It figured for an easy trace job. All I had to do was find a missing guy named Thaddeus Mink, a painter. Only before it was over, a couple of people turned up dead. And what made me think maybe I was trailing a killer with a screw loose was what happened to those seven cats. The thing teed off for me when a letter came to the Lion Detective Bureau in the morning mail. My boss, the Lion, opened it. You could see the dollar signs in his eyes. Ah, Jeffrey. Well, well, look here. That rich uncle of yours finally kick off? What do you mean? You look so happy. Oh, it's not that. Jeffrey, listen to this. Uh, <clears throat> the Ezra Park Duffield Art Gallery's Pasadena from the sanctum of E.P. Duffield. Already I don't like oh, it. Oh, now, 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 Jeffrey. Mr. Duffield encloses his personal check for $50. For which we do what? Uh, yes, well, uh, <clears throat> now let me see. Uh, no, we find a missing person, Jeffrey. A man by the name of Mink, Thaddeus Mink, a painter. Uh, Mr. Duffield says uh, we'll be doing an uh, an inestimable service to the world of art. Duffield say why he doesn't go to the cops? Well, he does mention that he has personal reasons for maintaining secrecy. They all say. What do you mean by that? Listen, Lion, the L.A. police look for missing persons free. Guy doesn't want the free service, he's got a reason. Maybe he wants a finger man, maybe it's a stakeout. Jeffrey, do you think that if I thought... Sure that... I do. You don't mean that. I mean it, only count me out. I don't risk my private op license for 50 bucks. See you. Hey, now, wait a minute. Mr. Duffield says in his letter he's coming here to the office himself this morning. Well, you see him, fatso. I got a short thirst. Jeffrey! I'll be in Dugan's place on Hill Street if anything good turns up. You mean you won't take the case? You take it. All right, Jeffrey, I will. Well, that ought to be Duffield now. I'll let him in and me out. How do you do? Are you Mr. Lyon? I'm Regan. Uh, that's Lyon behind the desk. I see. I'm E.P. Duffield. Yeah? Well, come in. Thank you, Mr. Regan. Uh, 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 Miss Duffield, come in, come in. Shall I sit here, Mr. Lyon? Uh, yes. Well, run along, Jeffrey. I'm taking this case, remember? Hey, you're waiting in Dugan's place on Hill Street until something good turns up. Yeah, that's right. See you. I went to Dugan's, or sat looking into it. What I kept seeing was E.P. Duffield. Red hair, gray-green eyes, tall, about 5'11". But not too much of her, just enough, any place you look. I looked up and I was still seeing E.P. Duffield. That's because she was there. Mind if I sit down, Mr. Regan? Bar's public. Thanks. What'll a lady have? Nothing, thank you. Oh, Lion didn't take your case? Well, he said you were the operative. So? Mr. Regan, I have an art gallery. Ezra Park Duffield Galleries, Pasadena. He was my father. I'm Esther Patricia Duffield. You wrote a letter. Said you wanted somebody to find a missing person. A painter named Thaddeus Mink. That's right. You didn't go to the cops. Why? Cops trace missing persons free. Well, but you see, Mr. Regan, I couldn't. They wouldn't help me. Give me more. I've never seen Thaddeus Mink. I don't know what he looks like. Keep on. It's true. You see, he's a painter. He sent me a number of paintings by express. But I haven't been able to locate him. I've tried, but... Mr. Regan, if you'd come to the gallery and see his pictures, I think you'd understand. Will you come? You put up a 50-buck retainer, lady. You want me to look at pictures for 50 bucks? I look. In here, Jeff. With you, lady. The mink paintings are here in my office. There they are. Cats. Yes, cats. And look how he paints them. How evil he makes them. Yeah, I see what you mean. Cat phobia, Jeff. Sometimes an artist becomes great through passionate love. And sometimes through passionate hate. And mink hates cats. Got it? 
made him a great painter. Is that why you want me to find him? I have just these few canvases. I want more. They'll be worth thousands of dollars. Hmm. You paint those circus pictures, too? No. No, I did. You? A few years ago. I traveled with the circus, but my paintings aren't much good. Hmm. Mink ever paint anything except cats? One picture. Did here? I have all his pictures. But you've never seen him. I told you he sent them express. I tried to trace him, but I couldn't find him. All I have are the paintings. These are the cats and the one other. All signed the same way. Not with his name, but with the print of a cat's paw painted in one corner. Where's the other one? Over here. I keep it draped. It frightens me. Look. A woman. You see, Jeff, he's painted her back as she stands at the mirror fixing her hair. The back of an ordinary woman. But in the mirror, her face, the eyes, are of a cat. And the way her fingers curl and hook into her hair. Like cat's claws. Yeah. Well, maybe she's something we can go on. What do you mean? Well, maybe somebody else has painted her, too. Maybe she's registered as a model. We find her, maybe we get a line on Mink. Might work. I found her photo in an agency. Mrs. Margaret Ames lived in Hollywood. I drove out there. Only when I got there, I rang the doorbell, I got a big surprise. Sergeant Bowles of the Hollywood Division L.A. Police opened the door. Regan, what do you want? Came to see Mrs. Margaret Ames? Yeah, it figured. See a client of yours? You do a lousy job, Regan, a lousy job. There ought to be a law against you private guys. Always getting people killed. She got strangled, Regan. It killed her. Mind if I look? Come on. Thanks. Like I say, uh, the deceased, a client of yours? Nope. You know her? Nope. A lot of good you're going to give us. There she is. Sort of surprised look on her face. Maybe she hadn't planned to get strangled this morning. Oh, could be. Neighbor lady phoned us up. She come in to borrow coffee. That's what she found. Scared the hairpiece off of her, she said. Mrs. Ames live alone? Divorced, lives alone. We got nothing, Regan, nothing. <laughs> The police haven't a line at all on who might have killed Margaret Ames, Jeffrey. No, no. Here, let me check the late edition. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, here you are, my boy. You think they may have turned up something by now, huh? Well, Sergeant Bowles wouldn't have phoned me if they had. No, no, I suppose not. Jeffrey, here's an interesting item in the second section of the paper. Yeah? It says that in a place called Mountain Crest on the mountains near Los Angeles, lion, lion. somebody's been putting out poison meat. Yeah, but here's the strange thing. The pieces of meat have been tied up in trees. Huh? Yes, and several cats have been poisoned. Hey, wait a second. Poison, meat up in trees? That could be it. It could be what, Jeffrey? Maybe the poisoner ties the meat in trees so dogs won't get it. Only cats. Why, Lion? Well, I don't know, Jeffrey. Maybe because he hates cats. Jeffrey, you mean that uh, that, that cat painter, Mr. Mink... It's worth a try. Mountain Crest, you said? Yes. We'll keep in touch with the Margaret Ames murder, Lion. I'm going to Mountain Crest. <laughs> It was only a couple of hour drive, but I got started late and it was dark when I got there. Cold up there, snow above the 4,000 foot level. Mountain Crest was half a dozen houses, abandoned lumber mill, and Mountain Crest Haven, a rundown auto court with a gas pump and cafe. I pulled in and stopped at the gas pump. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting, but we didn't expect no customer up here a mean night like this. You run this place? Oh, gosh, no. I work here. I'm Jimmy. Everybody around here knows me. That is, everybody there is around here. Some gas, mister? What it'll hold. Hey, you ought to go inside and warm up. Have a cup of coffee while I fill her up. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, Bunny will serve you. Bunny? Uh, she came up here a couple of weeks ago. She's the waitress. Ah, your girlfriend, huh? No. No, she ain't. I went inside. Maybe I saw why Jimmy's face clouded up when I asked him if Bunny was his girlfriend. Bunny was behind the counter, ordinary, pretty kid, corn yellow hair, about maybe 19. 
But on a counter stool talking to her was a slick-looking guy, 25, thin-faced, pinstripe suit. I walked over, slow. What do you mean, What are you hot for? You got no right to butt in. Well, I butt in, I butt in. Listen, you can't talk to me like that, Art Jones. Oh, no, you think you're smart? Oh, you want something? Oh. Yeah, I could use coffee, Bunny. How do you know my name? Jimmy told me. Uh, I'll see you later, Bunny. Bill collector? Him? That's Art Jones. He's in one of the cabins. Mm, You like the cold weather? He doesn't know what he likes. Cream or black, mister? Uh, black. He didn't look like your type, Bunny. He takes me places. Dancing down to Anaheim. Sure. Here's your coffee. Anything else? No, not now. Why don't you go with Jimmy? He hasn't got a car. Yeah, but the next time I will. I don't know where Art gets off. Just because Mr. Mink gave me a... Mink? Yes. He gave me a painting. He's a painter. But that's no reason for Art to get sore. Why, Mr. Mink is old. He must be 35. Yeah, yeah. oh. You live around here, Mink? In a cabin up on Lime Peak. Far from here? A couple of miles. You live alone? Mm Mm-hmm. He's he's sort of funny. I think he's scared of people. But I guess he likes me. You know him, mister? By reputation. He's a very sweet man. What I hear... He gave you a painting of a cat, huh? Yes, he did. Cat's paw painted in the corner? Yes. It was a picture of a dead cat. A dead cat? Read in the paper some cats got poison around here lately, around Mountain Crest. Seven of them. The courtier mink might have done it? Oh, no. He loves cats. He loves them. Now, what I heard, I heard he hates them. <laughs> I phoned the lion and told him what I had. He had something for me. Cops had traced the strangled woman Mink had painted. Mrs. Margaret Ames' maiden name was Margaret Mink. She had a brother someplace, cops said. His name was Thaddeus. Next call I made was to Pasadena. Hello? E.P. Duffel speaking. Hello, Esther. Jeff Regan. Oh, hello, Jeff. Located your painter, baby. Thaddeus Mink. You have? Yeah, in a cabin up here in the mountains. I'm near there now. Where are you? Place called Mountain Crest. Mink's cabin's up a couple of miles from here. Well, that that's fine, Jeff. Jeff, I want to see him first myself. He's very queer and temperamental. I'm sorry, baby. Um, I've got to go up there first thing in the morning. Mink's maybe mixed up in a murder. I rented one of the cabins at Mountain Crest Haven, got in bed and read some Edgar Allan Poe to quiet my nerves. About six the next morning, the wind dropped. Wind had brushed everything white, still, smooth. I started for Mink's cabin on Lime Peak about eight. Bunny went with me. There it is. Yeah, smoke through the pines. That's from his cabin. We're almost there. Hey, hold it. What, Jeff? Footprints. In the snow. Coming from that way. From the highway. There's a shortcut that way to the road where it goes over the summit. Man's footprints must have been made this morning since the wind dropped or they'd have been covered over. Now, come on. Wait a minute. What is it? Over there. Same footprints going back toward the highway. Running. Steps are longer and the snow is kicked between them. Yes. Come on, maybe something's happened. We ran for the cabin. It stood in the pines in front of a shelf of rock. The footprints led to the door. Then running away from the door again and toward the highway. There weren't any other tracks. The cabin door stuck, but it was unlocked. It always sticks. There. There. Mr. Mink? Mr. Mink? Come on. Oh! It wasn't Mink. It was a thin-faced slick looker in a pinstripe suit. And it is stocking feet. Art Jones. Strangled. Five foot eleven of beautiful red-headed dame, E.P. Duffield, Duffield Art Gallery's Pasadena, hired me to find a missing cat painter named of Mink. First track I got led to his sister, but that was a dead end. 
Somebody had strangled her. Then I went up in the mountains. Somebody had poisoned seven cats at a place called Mountain Crest. Maybe Mink. Yeah, Mink lived up there, only when I got to his cabin, there was a corpse on the floor. Art Jones, Bunny's pal in the pinstripe suit. Strangled. No shoes on. I searched the cabin, not a shoe in the joint. Half an hour later, Bunny and I got back down to Mountain Crest Haven, the combination gas station and auto court where she worked as a waitress. <sighs> Whew. Oh, this is better. Mm-hmm. I'd better get you some hot coffee. You're not used to the coffee. Yeah, after I phone the sheriff. Where's the nearest place I got one? Meridian Township. Yeah, I'll be back for the coffee. Jeff. Yeah? Jeff. Mr. Mink couldn't have killed Art. Funny. Art Jones went up to Mink's cabin this morning. You and Art were quarreling about Mink last night. Art was jealous. Art was crazy to think that Mr. Mink... Maybe. But he went up there. He saw his footprints going in through the snow. The ones that came back out were made by the same shoes. I checked that. But Art Jones didn't make them. No. No, I know. The killer took Jones's shoes after he strangled him and wore them when he left so he wouldn't make tracks with his own shoes. Mr. Mink didn't do that. Well, there weren't any other tracks, Bunny. One pair of footsteps in, one pair of footsteps out. Jones in to see Mink. Tell him to lay off seeing you, probably. Who out? I'll get you some hot coffee. Sorry, kid. So that was it. Case just about wrapped up. Mink must have strangled Jones. Jones was strangled just like Mink's sister. If there weren't any other tracks in the snow, it didn't make sense anybody else had been there. I phoned the sheriff at Meridian Township. It took five or six minutes to get him on the phone. His name was Lyle. Sheriff Jasper Lyle, what can I do for you? My name's Regan, private investigator from Los Angeles. Yeah? You better put out a description on a Thaddeus Mink, Sheriff. I can give details. Short, about 35 years. That's out already. Huh? Out already. Mink, wanted for questioning homicide, L.A., connection, strangulation of his sister, Margaret Mink Ames. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. On the wires at four yesterday. Don't think he did it, though. Don't seem the kind. Sitting right here beside me in the office. Give me that again. You got Mink there in your office? Yeah. Got cells, Bob. Ain't big time, you know, like you folks down there. Yeah, street. yeah, yeah. Sheriff, hmm? tell me one thing. When did you pick Mink up? Uh, yesterday. He'd picked Mink up four hours after the wanted was sent out by L.A. Eight o'clock last night. Mink was in the Meridian General Store buying cat food. Yeah, and he told the sheriff a sad story. He loved cats. Loved them. Had four. But they'd come down with something, suffered. Mink had had to put them out of their misery. And when he found out they'd passed the disease around Mountain Crest, he put poison up in the trees to save the cats of the town the misery his cats had suffered. He'd bought a new cat, though. That's why he's buying cat food. So that made everything fine. Case all wrapped up. Yeah. Like a hot rod around a telephone pole. Sugar, Jeff? Jeff? Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah, thanks. Here. Thanks. Anyway, I'm glad it wasn't Mr. Mink. Yeah, Mink didn't strangle Jones. Couldn't have. Sheriff had him. Well, I'm glad. Jones went up to the cabin to see Mink. Saw her about Mink giving you the painting. That part still holds. Made tracks in the snow. Didn't walk back out. Got strangled. But his shoes walked out. Somebody in him, you think, Bunny? Not Mink, not Jones. Somebody with a motive to kill Jones? Hmm? You didn't like him. I? Well, Did I... you? Uh, Art Jones? Yeah, well, you went I... with him because he took your places, only maybe you didn't feel good about it. He wasn't your type. I guess he wasn't. He wasn't. And then he began to crowd you. Mink business, for instance. You figured he didn't have any right to butt into your life. Well, that's true, but... What about Jimmy? Jimmy? Yeah, the kid that works around here. More your style. You seem like a nice kid. He is. Yeah, only Art Jones got in between you. What are you thinking? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking somebody must have been in Mink's cabin when Jones got there this morning. Somebody that had gone in before the wind dropped, so the tracks covered over. Somebody that would have killed Jones. And you think you sleep that... in one of the cottages here at the court? Yes. Sleepwalk, maybe? Jeff, I don't like now, you. Listen, baby, the sheriff will be getting up to Mink's cabin in the next ten minutes on my say-so. Half an hour later, this joint here's going to be jumping, only not with customers. 
with cops, deputies asking questions. Now, let's get ahead of them, huh? Well, I didn't kill Art, if that's what you want to know. I know you didn't. What? Well, then... No, you couldn't have. You couldn't have done the job, strangled him. Strangling's not a girl-sized job. Well, then why did you ask me all those questions? To get answers, baby. About you and Art Jones and Jimmy. Jimmy? Yeah. Only two people had a motive to kill Jones. You and Jimmy. Look on her face said she was scared that that might be it. Jimmy liked her, didn't like Jones. I started to look for Jimmy. And what he was doing when I found him didn't help. He was stealing my car. Hey! Hey, get out of that car! <coughs> Jimmy! Jimmy, get out of that car! You won't get away. Come here! Come out! All right, this will hold you. What are you trying to do? Come here. Let me go. I got an arm lock on him. All of a sudden, he quit. Fear had worked two ways on him. Made him fight, made him quit. You better talk, Jimmy. Like fast, huh? Wait till I shut off the motor. We'll go inside out of the cold. And then I want answers. I... What I saw on the seat of my car when I reached in to shut off the motor stopped me. A pair of shoes. Art Jones' shoes. Still wet from being in the snow. I took Jimmy into the cafe, sat him on a stool. Bunny came in. Jimmy. Jimmy, what did you do? I, I didn't do anything. You tried to steal my car. You stole the keys out of my cottage. You'd have gotten away if the motor hadn't been cold. Jimmy. Jimmy. Why did you want to steal my car? Because I, I had to get away. Because you killed Art Jones? No, I, I, I didn't kill him. I... I... Go on, kid. Get it out. I... I had to get away. I, I had to. Jeff, please. Keep out of it, Bunny. You think a lot of Bunny, Jimmy. Well, I... Yes, I do. You didn't like Jones? No, I didn't. Where'd you get his shoes? I found them. Yeah? In the snow by the highway. Look, the sheriff will want a better story than that. You'd better practice up on me. Well, I... I got up early. You sleep here someplace? I've got a room in the kitchen. Go on. I went up the highway a ways. I was trying to think. Well, because of Art Jones and Bunny. I didn't think I had any chance with her, I guess. But then I saw the shoes in the snow by the highway. I brought them back. Anybody see you coming or going? Why, yes, yes. Yes? Well, they were scraping the road. There's where I found the shoes. I checked Jimmy's story, and it was okay. He had a snowplow crew of witnesses. So that made it great. Two people had a motive to murder Jones, Jimmy and Bunny. Bunny couldn't have strangled Jones, and Jimmy didn't. Well, if nobody with a motive to murder Jones had murdered him, then it had to be this way. Somebody without a motive to murder him had. I walked back up to the cabin where Jones was strangled. Sheriff Lyle and his deputies had been and gone. They'd made tracks in the snow. But then I saw some tracks they hadn't made. They were the paw marks of Thaddeus Mink's new cat. I asked myself where I had seen cat's paw marks before. That gave me the answer. I went back down to Mountain Crest Haven and made a phone call. I got the right answer. That left me just one place to go. It took a while to get there. Yes, this is a surprise. Painting? Oh, just touching up this still life. Been better, lady, if you just stayed E.P. Duffield art dealer. You... You mean because I paint so badly? It's part of it. You're more the outdoor type. Tall, strong. Ah, I suppose that's so. The circus painting's over there. You painted. She showed me yesterday. Yes. You were in the circus. Strong enough for that. Jeff, just what are you trying to get at? Not trying. I've got. I phoned the model agency from Mountain Crest a little while ago. Model agency where I got the track on Margaret Ames Mink, Mink's sister that got strangled. You'd gotten her address a couple of hours before she was murdered. That doesn't mean anything. You wanted to be a great painter. Yes. Yeah, but honey, you didn't have the stuff. What happens? Thaddeus Mink sends you his paintings. He is a great painter. Go on, Jeff. Sure. Mink didn't sign his name to his paintings. Painted on a cat's paw print instead. So? Mink was a shy guy. He found out nobody knew him. Nobody knew he'd painted the great paintings of his you had. Except his sister. She'd posed for one. You killed her. And, Jeff? And that left Mink. 
Him dead, you'd be the genius that painted the pictures. Yes. Well, he is dead, Jeff, and I am. You went up to Mink's cabin after I talked to you on the phone last night. Nobody home, but you waited. Guy came in early this morning, you strangled him. Wore his shoes to walk out. I said, Mink's dead. Uh Uh-uh. Mink's not dead. You've never seen Mink, and you strangled the wrong guy. A guy named Jones. (laughs) Jones? Not Smith. Jeff, I'm not a fool. You're lying to save your skin. My skin? Your skin. Hasn't it occurred to you that there's somebody else who knows who painted the cat pictures? Hey. You mean Regan. That was in it from the first, Jeff. Jeff, bursting in like this into my office, perhaps trying to make love to me. You shouldn't have done it. Not when I happen to be armed. Put that gun down. Oh, no, Jeff. There. Now, stay still. No. Esther, you should stick to strangling. It's more accurate. Next day, I gave the lion a little lecture on art. Very well, very well, very well, Jeffrey. You seem to have become quite an authority on art. But I'm afraid I'm a little more interested in art, uh, Jones. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, you went back up to Mountain Crest, I suppose. Yep. Uh, that nice young boy, Jimmy. How are he and that girl, Bunny? Uh, say, Jeffrey, uh, why did he try to steal your car and run away? Well, only he and Bunny had a motive to kill Jones. Jimmy found the shoes, then overheard my call to Sheriff Lyle. He knew he hadn't killed Jones. So? You mean he suspected... Well, he was scared. All he could think was to get those shoes far away. He knew there was strong evidence. E.P. Duffy had tossed them out of her car, but he didn't know that. He thought that Bunny... Oh, I can't believe that. He was in love. That mixes you up. Yes. Yes, it does. Only Bunny hadn't done it. Jimmy hadn't either. If the two people who had reason to kill Jones hadn't killed him... It added that Jones was killed by mistake. Yes, I see that. In Mink's cabin. So it made sense the killer meant to kill Mink. Only he didn't know what Mink looked like. Only one person fitted that. E.P. Duffield. Why, that's brilliant, my boy, brilliant. But uh, what about Thaddeus Mink? Mink? Oh, Sheriff Lyle released him. And when he found out how much dough his paintings are going to bring him, he turned philanthropist. He did? Yeah. Yeah. Gave us a present in there. What? Yeah, right outside the door. Oh, Jeffrey. It may be one of his valuable paintings worth thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be. Could be worth that much. Big enough box. You open it. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, do you think it... Oh, Jeffrey... Jeff Regan, Investigator, is written by William Frug and William Fifield, produced and directed by Sterling Tracy and stars Frank Graham as Regan, with Frank Nelson as Anthony J. Lyon, original music by Dick Aran. Jeff Regan, Investigator, will be back next week at this same time.